What's up, YouTube? It's your boy K Supreme. Back with the video, we got George Carlin on soft language. Now, if you're new here, appreciate y'all for tuning to the channel. Welcome, and yeah, it's K Supreme gang. So, hey, finna be tuned in for a good one. But hey, I just want to say those who have been subscribed to the channel, I I apologize if you I know it's been a minute since I posted. I'm gonna probably gonna say this in all of my videos I upload today. I just want to say, you know. Just been, you know, I just really do apologize. I know it's not cool, you feel me? Um, and I didn't really give y'all any notice type shit. But I just want to say, you know, I'm back with it. I'm back in action, I for sure. I'm always going to be posting. That's always going to be a thing. You know, sometimes I just got to, you know, take a break type shit, you feel me? Because you don't want to, you know, burn out or anything like that, you know? And just, because I've, I've been doing this YouTube shit for a while, you feel me? I'm still, you know, very young, but I've been doing this YouTube shit for a while. And uh, so, you know, sometimes you just need, you know, a little break. But hey, I'm back in action. You know, I'm glad to see you. I hope you're glad to see me type shit. And hey, we are pr almost at 50,000 subscribers. So I was like, why not better time to get back kicking with the YouTube shit than right fucking now type shit. You know what I mean? Nothing, you know, no time is better than the present. So I was like, let's go. Let's get with it. You feel me? But yeah, like I said, we're going to get to it. And again, a great, great thing to get back started is that dude, George Carlin. One of the one of my favorite comedians slash entertainers slash truth talkers, truth speakers, you whatever call it, you feel me? This dude has a way to be funny, but at the same time, spit so much facts in your noggin, bro. It's crazy, dog. So I always love to get to George Carlin. So we're gonna see what this one is. Keep letting me know down below in the comments, videos, what videos you want to see next. I react to anything on this channel: sports, comedy, uh, funny, just anything, bro. Exciting videos, whatever. Just put it down below in the comments so I can react to it. Cause I'm gonna be I'm gonna be way more consistent type shit. So just turn on those post notifications because these videos will be rolled out tight shit. You understand what I'm saying? So George Carlin on Soft Language. Don't wanna make the intro too long. Just wanted to give y'all a little update. And but those who are, you know, still here right now, thank y'all so much for uh, you know, still rocking with me type shit and on all this because hey, this journey finna be a good one type shit. So hey, road to 100 k we gonna go crazy with it. Let's get it, George Carlin. I don't like words that hide the truth. I don't like words that conceal reality. I don't like euphemisms or euphemistic language. And American English is loaded with euphemisms because Americans have a lot of trouble dealing with reality. Americans have trouble facing the truth. So they invent a kind of a soft language to protect themselves from it. And it gets worse with every generation. For some reason, it just keeps getting worse. I'll give you an example of that. There's a condition in combat, most people know about it, it's when a fighting person's nervous system has been stressed to its absolute peak and maximum, can't take any more input. The nervous system has either snapped or is about to snap. In the First World War, that condition was called shell shock. Simple, honest, direct language, two syllables, shell shock. Almost sounds like the guns themselves. That was 70 years ago. Then a whole generation went by, and the Second World War came along, and we, the very same combat condition was called battle fatigue. Four syllables now, takes a little longer to say, doesn't seem to hurt as much. Fatigue is a nicer word than shock. Shell shock, battle fatigue. <laughs> Then we had the war in Korea in 1950. Madison Avenue was riding high by that time. And the very same combat condition was called operational exhaustion. <laughs> hey, we're up to eight syllables now. And the humanity has been squeezed completely out of the phrase. It's totally sterile now. Operational exhaustion. Sounds like something that might happen to your car. <laughs> Then, of course, came the war in Vietnam, which has only been over for about 16 or 17 years. And thanks to the lies and deceit surrounding that war, I guess it's no surprise that the very same condition was called post-traumatic stress disorder. <laughs> Still eight syllables, but we've added a hyphen. <laughs> and the pain is completely buried under jargon. Post-traumatic stress disorder. I'll bet you, if we'd have still been calling it shell shock, some of those Vietnam veterans might have gotten the attention they needed at the time.
But it didn't happen. And one of the reasons, one of the reasons is because we were using that soft language. That language that takes the life out of life. And it is a function of time. It does keep getting worse. I'll give you another example. Sometime during my life, sometime during my life, toilet paper became bathroom tissue. I wasn't notified of this. No one asked me if I agreed with it. It just happened. Toilet paper became bathroom tissue. Sneakers became running shoes. False teeth became dental appliances. Medicine became medication. Information became directory assistance. The dump became the landfill. Car crashes became automobile accidents. Partly cloudy became partly sunny. Motels became motor lodges. House trailers became mobile homes. Used cars became previously owned transportation. Room service became guest room dining. And constipation became occasional irregularity. When I was a little kid, if I got sick, they wanted me to go to the hospital and see the doctor. Now they want me to go to a health maintenance organization or a wellness center to consult a health care delivery professional. Poor people used to live in slums. Now the economically disadvantaged occupy substandard housing in the inner cities. And they're broke. They're broke. They don't have a negative cash flow position. They're fucking broke. Because a lot of them were fired. You know, fired, management wanted to curtail redundancies in the human resources area. So many people are no longer viable members of the workforce. Smug, greedy, well-fed white people have invented a language to conceal their sins. It's as simple as that. The CIA doesn't kill anybody anymore. They neutralize people. Or they depopulate the area. The government doesn't lie and engages in disinformation. The Pentagon actually measures nuclear radiation in something they call sunshine units. Israeli murderers are called commandos. Arab commandos are called terrorists. Contra killers are called freedom fighters. Well, if crime fighters fight crime and firefighters fight fire, what do freedom fighters fight? They never mention that part of it to us, do they? Never mention that part of it. I'm thinking about this dude, but he got to talk about, man. <laughs> he don't do nothing but spit facts, bro. I don't know how he does it, man. Hey, dog, but he just, he, the way he's, his delivery, too, the way he sets everything up, bro. Like, he, he be having me just, again, that's why I'm saying I always love getting to his shit, bro. I know there's still a lot more to get to, so please let me know more suggestions down below in the comments. I've reacted to a few of his things, bro, and they've been absolutely fucking gold, bro. Absolutely fucking <laughs> Just, just fucking amazing, you know, so just so um, good. So in this one, again, we're halfway through, but this one's just living it up, living up to his, uh, 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 his, uh, just good, just good shit overall. So, man, I don't know how he does, but this dude just be spitting facts, bro. Just listen, listen to the dude, bro. Real shit, listen to him. He's funny. He has a little, but he really be telling the truth. Listen to my dog, dog. Listen to him. Listen. And some of this stuff is just silly, we know, we all know that. Like on the airlines, they say they want a pre-board. Well, what the hell is pre-board? What does that mean? To get on before you get on? They say they're going to pre-board those passengers in need of special assistance. Cripples! Simple, honest, direct language. There's no shame attached to the word cripple that I can find in any dictionary. No shame attached to it. In fact, it's a word used in Bible translations. Jesus healed the cripples. Doesn't take seven words to describe that condition. But we don't have any cripples in this country anymore. We have the physically challenged. Is that a grotesque enough evasion for you? How about differently abled? I've heard them call that differently abled. You can't even call these people handicapped anymore. They'll say, we're not handicapped, we're handy capable. <laughs> these poor people have been bullshitted by the system into believing that if you change the name of the condition, somehow you'll change the condition. Well, hey, cousin, <laughs> doesn't happen. Doesn't happen. Yeah.
We have no more deaf people in this country, hearing impaired. No one's blind anymore, partially sighted or visually impaired. We have no more stupid people. Everybody has a learning disorder. <laughs> or he's minimally exceptional. How would you like to be told that about your child? He's minimally exceptional. <laughs> oh, thank God for that. <laughs> Psychologists actually have started this calling ugly people those with severe appearance deficits. <laughs> it's getting so bad that any day now I... Severe appearance deficits is crazy. Is it not, y'all? Dog, is, is y'all, is he, is this dude, just, he's like, he, he might be my number one, bro. I love this so much. You can call him a comedian, you can call him an entertainer, you can, I, I just call him a truth speaker for real. But he might be number one, to be honest. He'd be, because, <laughs> and he's so funny, but he's so well-spoken. And the way he just controls the crowd and just, and he just, just keeps you locked in and invested throughout the whole entire bit, man. Like, who's doing it better than him? I don't know, bro. But, uh, shout out to George Carlin, bro. Real nigga, bro. Real nigga. <laughs> Psychologists actually have started calling ugly people those with severe appearance deficits. It's getting so bad that any day now I expect to hear a rape victim referred to as an unwilling sperm recipient. And we have no more old people in this country. No more old people. We shipped them all away and we brought in these Senior citizens. Isn't that a typically American 20th century phrase? Bloodless, lifeless. No pulse in one of them. A senior citizen. But I've accepted that when I've come to terms with it. I know it's here to stay. We'll never get rid of it. That's what they're going to be called. So I'll relax on that. But the one I do resist, the one I keep resisting, is when they look at an old guy and they'll say, Look at him, Dan. He's 90 years young. Oh, yeah. Imagine the fear of aging that reveals. To not even be able to use the word old to describe someone. To have to use an antonym. And fear of aging is natural. It's universal, isn't it? We all have that. No one wants to get old. No one wants to die. But we do. So we bullshit ourselves. <laughs> I started bullshitting myself when I got to my 40s. As soon as I was in my 40s, I'd look in the mirror and I'd say, Well, I, I guess I'm getting older. Older sounds a little better than old, doesn't it? Sounds like it might even last a little longer. <laughs> Bullshit, I'm getting old. And it's okay, because thanks to our fear of death in this country, I won't have to die. I'll pass away. <laughs> or I'll expire like a magazine subscription. If it happens in the hospital, they'll call it a terminal episode. The insurance company will refer to it as negative patient care outcome. And if it's the result of malpractice, they'll say it was a therapeutic misadventure. I'm telling you, some of this language makes me want to vomit. Well, maybe not vomit. Makes me want to engage in an involuntary personal protein spill. Shout out to that boy George Carlin, bro. I fucking love that dude, man. Shout out to that dude, Lord George Carlin, bro. Shout out to him. But um, again, like I said, I'm so glad to be back doing this YouTube shit, bro. And again, we're starting off with bangers type shit. So yeah, keep staying tuned to the channel. You feel me? If y'all know me, you know what I mean. You know, it's been a little while since I posted, but hey, I'm back on my shit. So just expect I ain't gonna make no promises type shit, but just expect a lot of videos. You feel me type shit? But hey, we gonna go crazy with it. Hey, um, love y'all though. I really do feel me. That's why I'm always gonna be posting, regardless. You feel me? I'm always gonna be posting. I promise y'all that. You feel me? Y'all know the grind is not. Stop. So please keep letting me know what videos I should react to next and all of that. You feel me? I know I'm, I'm down to react to literally whatever. You feel me? I'm always down to have a great time. You know, chilling with y'all. React to, you know, cool, watching cool videos. You feel me? And especially that dude, George Carlin. So, hey, we're going to get we gonna get some more videos type shit. And just keep on letting me know what I should react to next. Love y'all so much. Glad to be back. Hope y'all glad to see me. And yeah, we're going to go crazy with it. Road to 100K type shit. We so close. And we're going to get there. Hey, you know the vibes. King Supreme. We out.